All right. So this is the last piece for this unit, basically coming up with points based on the uh, question. We started off with, hey, here's the graph. Can you extract information from it? Then we went, this is the equation. Can you extract information from it? And then we did a few examples where here are the points, make the regression, come up with the equation. Okay. The last piece is no points given. Okay. Is it recording? Yeah, it's recording. So we're going to have to make our own point. But nothing changes. Nothing changes in terms of the period, all of that, the max, the min, the mid, all of that is still somewhat. You have to just find it. Uh, where is this? One second, guys. I'm off on my. Okay, here we go. The paddle wheel of the SS Beaver has a 30 feet diameter. Okay, so the paddle wheel has a 30 feet diameter. That's worth highlighting. It revolves 30 times per minute. We're moving at top speed. Using this speed and starting from a, a point at, at the very top of the wheel, please use a different color for this one because the question more or less has to give an indication as to where do we start from. Write a model for the height and feet of the end of the paddle relative to the water surface as a function of time in seconds. Assume the paddle is two feet below the water at its lowest point. So we want to somehow come up with the equation given this scenario. Okay, so this is, uh, let's, let's make a sketch here. So we have, in this case, the very important uh, high, mid, and low scenario again. I want you to think of those three as much as possible. Where do we start based on this scenario? We start at the very top, correct? Okay. Uh, what else do we know? That this wheel, what does this tell us uh, for sure here? The 13 feet in diameter. It means that the difference, the difference between the highest and the lowest point is 13 feet. Would that make sense to you? Okay, that it's 13 feet, right? From the highest to the lowest is 13 feet. <clears throat> what else do we know? Revolve 30 times per minute. What does that mean? What's our period? Period is time for how many revolutions? One, right? That's usually what the period is for one revolution. We have the time for how many revolutions? It says revolve 30 times per minute. We can't have that. So the period is going to be, what's the best way to do this here? 30 times in a minute. So we want to know how many times in one minute. Let me just take my notes here, how I usually do this for you guys. Yeah, I just really go like this. Um, just go arrow like this. If it's 30 times, 30 revs in one minute, then I, I say this, how many, what's the time going to be for one revolution? That's my reasoning here. And you remember this one, right? Cross multiply and divide. You remember that? Cross this very variable list, you go there, cross multiply and divide. So x is really 1 times 1, duh, right? Divided by 30. And so this is uh, 
one times one would be in minutes. And this is 30 revolutions, right? Let's turn that into seconds because we're going to have a fraction of a minute, right? That's the equivalent of saying 60 seconds for 30 revolutions. Because 1 over 30 is going to give you an ugly decimal. So in time, try to break it down to smaller units, okay? So 60 divided by 30, that would be 2 revolutions per second. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Two seconds per revolution, sorry. I'm off, right? Seconds is on top, so two seconds, that's how long it takes per one revolution. This is my period. That is what I'm after. Very important. So all of this was devoted to figuring out the period somehow. So we've got our period, which is very important. And we also want to know, uh, what else does it tell us? Did you, did you read this part right here? Assume, assume that the paddle is two feet below the water surface at the lowest point. So what would that tell us about these three lines? Which one are we given here? This is the lowest point right here. How would we indicate two feet below water? We would go, right? This is saying essentially minus two. Minus two. So if we add the 13, we would get to the top, correct? This would be negative two plus 13 would give us essentially an 11 positive here. So we now know that this is 11. This is negative 2 in terms of feet. This would be 11 feet above water. So almost think of it this way. The water is somewhere here. Right? But if we just look at the paddle in itself, we get 2 feet below water. We add the 13. This is that diameter of the wheel to get to 11. How do we get the mid now? Mid is 11 plus negative 2 divided by 2. So that would be 9 divided by 2, which is 4.5. Okay, so now we know that the mid is 4.5. We just went min plus max divided by 2 to get this one. Okay, so now we have the three points here. Let's do this one more time now, just to clean this up. Now that we have the numbers, we're going to go negative 2, 4.5, and 11 like this. We start at the top, and we're going to progressively move to the bottom, and then back up. Okay, We know that. And here's where I want to clarify. Uh, Nicholas, you had that problem yesterday with the regression, remember? You can't, the points you pick have to be within one cycle, okay? So if you ever, if you ever pick points to make your regression from a graph, those have to be five consecutive points within the one cycle. Because if you pick one from this cycle and another one from another cycle, it doesn't know what to do with it. So the points have to be within one cycle. That's why I go max, like I just pick one wave like that and I'll pick five points like that okay so this one right here is going to be our 0 11 point at time zero we're going to call that 0 11. what about the second point here how would we figure out our x variable we know that it's 4.5 here how do we figure out how much to go up by anybody remember that what do i always keep going up by for my x values. The period closed, period divided by 4, right? The x scale. You remember that? So let's go x scale is going to be 2 divided by 4. What's 2 divided by 4? 0 0.5 of a second. This is 
what I'm going to go up by every time for my x values. So I found my period. I found the x scale. Now I can say, okay, well, I'm just going to go 0 0.5. Right? I added 0 0.5 to it. I'm going to add another 0 0.5 to get me to 1, negative 2, okay, plus 0 0.5. And this is going to be 1.5, 4.5, and this is going to be 2, 11. Let's check if it makes sense. Does it make sense to go from 0 to 2 within one cycle? Yes, because I know that my period, how many, how many times it takes for one revolution, is 2. So this actually jives. Now we're going to go Sinreg, L1, L2. Y1, and we're going to come up with our regression here. Okay. So, go to your calculator, clear whatever is in there. We're going to go 0 0.5, 1, 1 1.5, 2. And then for the Y, it's just going to be 11, 4.5, negative 2, 4.5, 11. And we're going to go to our main screen. Have I used Synreg at some point? Should have done that earlier this morning. There it is. Copy paste. And here is our equation 6.5 sine of 3.1416x plus 1.57 plus 4.5. And this should jive with what we've come up with. If you think about it, it's 6.5, that's the amplitude. If you subtracted these two, you would get an amplitude of 6.5, which does make sense. Our median is 4.5, that's also represented here, right? So we have confirmation of, of what this is, what, what's happening here. You know what, we're not gonna graph because we don't have room. Uh, we're just going to stay with this for now, okay? Just coming up with our equation. That's probably the most challenging part, to be honest, is getting the equation. So I want you to try that right away. So let's go to page 36. Should I do 36 or hold on one second? Yeah. Try 36. Just basically, okay, come up with the equation. Okay, that's basically what I want you to focus on. Should we work in groups or? Let's work in groups. Let's go to whiteboards for this one and then write whatever mistakes you make there, that's fine. Let's do whiteboards. Let's do this. 